Thank you very much. Okay, right, uh, my name's Rob, and I uh, used to work for OpenTans, and now I work for Intel. And I'm going to talk about um, one of the leading projects that we're really pushing for uh, at Intel in the open source world. Um, and we're really uh, keen for this to be uh, involved in uh, both the desktop, mobile, and uh, embedded space. So let's start. So just what is Clutter? Clutter is a uh, toolkit for uh, building um, fast, animated, rich UIs. Um, they aren't like the things you see on the iPhone um, and anything where you, where we need to, we want to be blingy. So, um, but it's also fairly generic. So it's a base for higher level toolkits. It doesn't enforce anything like styling or, um, wh or what, how it should actually look. It just provides the mechanisms for, for actually using it. So it's influenced by Director. So if, I don't know if any of you have actually played with Director, but when I go through and talk a bit a little about how you actually produce your animations, then you'll see this going, uh, the, uh, the, the patterns that we use are very similar to those that um, are present in Director, uh, and they're also very similar to those that Java 3D uses. But from a programming style point of view, um, it follows the GTK style. Um, and so if you're comfortable with programming GTK systems, then you'll love Clatter. So it's written in C. Um, it's got a lovely API. Uh, it's LGPL, so you can link your proprietary applications against it. But you don't really want to do that. Um, you want to make everything open source, right? And it's also mature. We're at 0.8 now, and we'll be heading towards 1.0 in the coming months. Um, and we're already seeing this being used on increasingly uh, many uh, verticals, as well as um, uh, uh, the code base is mature. But the dependency-wise, they're small. The object, glib, and pango. We need the pango for the text rendering. But other than that, it's a fairly lightweight uh, dependency set. If you're building a no mobile style embedded uh, system, these are here already. If you're on your desktop, you've got them already. But why do you want to use Clutter? Right, so why don't you just draw everything in OpenGL like Myth TV does? So OpenGL is kind of pretty bare, pretty basic. It, all it does is describe you know, have a few drawing primitives and things like that. Whereas we actually add animations on top of that, so you can move things around, programmatically control them. Um, we add windowing and events. Events are very cool. I like to be able to click things and have things happen. So, but Clutter is also portable. It's designed to the same uh, high-level API works across on both OpenGL and OpenGLES, which uh, OpenGLES, if you've not heard of it, <coughs> is the equivalent of OpenGL for embedded systems. Um, it, has, it makes various changes in the specification, for instance, adding a fixed point uh, API for accessing the, um, the texture coordinates and stuff like that. But of course, it's easy, much easier than using OpenGL directly and programming the event systems directly and doing your animations directly. It's much, much easier. So um, where would you use it? I've mentioned a few of these things already, but on embedded, highly embedded systems, so like an internet kiosk or, or something like that, where, or an information kiosk. You go around a museum and you want to have something like whiz-bang effects when you show people can look through the exhibits and say, oh, yeah, find some extra information. Um, the Tate Modern has a, very, has a system which, would, which unfortunately is in flash, but it would be perfect. Mobile. So in mobile, I, 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 diff, I change that. I, that's different to embedded in the sense that an embedded system, when, when, it's, de, when it's designed, you have a clear idea of the size constraints. Um, by mobile, I mean that you a bit more variety in the size constraints. So you, the, the UI can change to be flexible with the sizing. So in the case of netbooks, um, you know, like the EPC, they come in a variety of different resolutions, and your UI would, you want your UI to be able to be flexible for those different sizes. And then there's the desktop. So, like very recently, uh, uh, Clutter was accepted as an external dependency into GNOME, and uh, GNOME 2.6 will include some Clutter-based components as a, as a valid external dependency. And in this case, you're probably going to be constrained to a window um, and you'll want to use the GTK integration that I mentioned in a minute. 
So I'm just going to go through some of the basic concepts about how Clutter works, um, how you go about programming with Clutter. Um, it's bear with me when I you know when I go through it because it's I'm going to be building up. So right at the beginning, Clutter is all about being a scene graph. So um, what this means is that you you rather than say Draw, you, you tell it what you're going to be draw, what to draw right at the beginning. So you just upload information, um, or you specify, oh, I have this texture, then I want it to be here, and I want this other texture, I want it to be here, and then I'm going to move them around. Um, you, rather than painting things directly. So Clutter Actor. Clutter Actor is the base um, G object that represents that all other ob um, classes are derived from. Um, this is the this is effectively a 2D layer in 3D space, so it can be moved around, um, it can be translated, it can be transformed, it can be scaled, it can be rotated, it can be clipped, and its origin can be set. So no more do you need to have to work out all the mathematics of moving something around. When you just say, oh, okay, put the origin in the center, therefore I can center it on the screen just by just by uh, halving the screen width and half screen height, rather than having to subtract them. That's a very trivial example, but many more cases it's more complicated than that. So actors can have a children, and actors also have a parent. Um, this is important because it influences how the event handling works, and also how um, because all uh, actors are tr always transformed relative to their parent. So if I have an actor with another actor inside it, and I rotate that actor, the outer actor, by 90 degrees, the inner actor will also be rotated, rotated by 90 degrees. But if I even rotated the inner actor by 90 degrees, that would be rotated with, in total 180 degrees. For the, in the context of the screen. So there are a few standard actors. Plus a rectangle. Well, this is just a filled colored rectangle. Not very interesting. Plus a texture. Very interesting. This is uh, uploaded from a file format, a PNG, uh, or a JPEG, or a um, SVG. The clutter, tone, a clutter clone texture can take an arbitrary actor and create a uh, an a actor that is, a, or is derived, well, that is a clone of that actor, including all its children, so that you can paint it um, exactly as it appears, and any updates will be repeated. That's done through uh, frame buffer objects. Clutter label, a piece of text, pretty useful. Clutter entry, a piece of text you can change. Uh, clutter stage, right, so this is continuing the concept of having an actor. The actors, you put them on the stage. Eventually, all the actors will have a parent that points upwards up until you get to the stage. And a clutter group. A clutter group is um, a number of actors, all, the, all, all positioned relative to each other. And it has a bounding box that is the equivalent of all the actors. So that means you can perform. This is a the, the clutter group is the most basic um, clutter container implementation. So clutter container is an interface that you can implement in your own actors if you like, which lets you, which has a, some very simple functions applied to it, such as add actor, remove actor, walk through the actors, but also slightly more complicated things like raise and lower them, and clutter group is the standard implementation. But when you want to implement your own custom method for laying out uh, actors, so you implement this interface, you realize you need some way of having information that is um, specific to each individual actor relative to its container. And in that context, you want these things called uh, child meta. So you can say uh, in, in a project that we've got right now called MBTK, which is a toolkit built on top of Glutter, you can specify that um, actors can be asked to fill or, or expand their, their, um, the cells that they've been given. So you can have a grid, and you can control how the actors are, posi uh, are laid out inside that grid. So that's enough. So, so far, we kind of got the ideas about how to put uh, just the basics of actors. But more fundamentally, we also want to animate these things. After all, this is supposed to be about rich, animated user interfaces. Um, so at the basis of it is Clutter Timeline. Now, Clutter Timeline is, um, has a duration, or, or, or it can be specified as a number of frames and a frames per second. So you, start a time, you create a timeline object. And then you can say, right, if this is just a, uh, a something that would fire an event at every single frame. So you can say, OK, I want a 100 frame um, timeline. And 
you can then uh, uh, 100 frame time name. So therefore, you can set the uh, yes. Yeah, so you have a 100 frame timeline, and then on each frame, you'll get a new event telling you that this frame has happened. This frame has happened. But if you try and animate too quickly, then your hardware can cope with. It will drop frames. It will actually drop frames so that if you say, can I have a timeline that will last five seconds, please? It will, as far as it can, last exactly five seconds. So you can have an animation that will, that you don't need to worry about your animations not working properly over different sets of hardware. Because you might have find that you have a slightly poorer performance, so therefore your animations may end up dropping frames, but you can guarantee that at least after the time that the timeline has happened, you should be at the same result as if you're on a piece of hardware that performs properly. So, but if we've got this set of frames, then what we need to actually kind of influence how, if I have a timeline that I can, my uh, actor can actually move. And this is one of the harder concepts that we have in Flutter, which is this thing called class alpha. Now, in reality, this is a really poor choice of name. Often, alpha is used to refer to the opacity. Um, so, or how and transparent something is. But in this case, it actually comes from physics, where you have an alpha function. And in this case, the alpha is a method that takes this frames and influences how we progress through our animation. So you can have a, a, a ramp, and as, time, and as the number of frames goes on, you, re you get to the animation constantly. So in which case, if I'm animating uh, an actor from here to here, I would just move very evenly like this. But I could have, um, I could have an exponential one. So therefore, I move much more, much more quickly, but I don't get quickly as I, uh, as I get towards the end. Um, oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> but so we have a bunch of built-in uh, alpha functions to, which you can use. But OK, so now I know how, I know I've explained how we go about building the, um, the, the getting from 0 to 1. It's not that interesting. Clutter behavior actually describes how to move the actors. So we have a few standard behaviors. Path, so from here to here. Or we could then have an ellipse. So you, have a, you can define a circle, or an ellipse, in fact. And then you can move around. And you can define the angles and the, the width and the height. B-spline, you can specify an arbitrary B-spline as a 3n plus 1 in points. Uh, the depth, that we, that's how far or um, the, in the z-axis, and rotate. The opacity, so you can change the opacity, but you can also scale actors. So clutter effect, well, actually, this is relevant from point eight, but clutter effect takes an, a timeline and a, and a standard behavior and an alpha and wraps it all into a single object. So you don't actually have to know all about those other things. You can just say, all right, oh, I, don't know, I, want to, I want this thing to fade out in two seconds. But we're actually getting rid of that. This is point eight, point 1.0. I saw in the git change logs, has been, it has been removed. But I'll explain its, uh, I'll explain its successor uh, in, the, in the end of the talk. Cut a score. So right now, if you only have a method for uh, move it, doing a timeline, doing an animation, say, move uh, from here to here, and then you want to do another animation that would say, oh, OK, right, and whilst I'm doing that, I want to um, fade that out and then turn it around, and then whatever. The clutter score lets you chain timelines together, either from one to the other to the other, or at arbitrary points within the timelines. So this allows you to make much more complicated animations. Thinking about like the flash and director example, at the bottom you'd have your, uh, your timeline grid where you can draw and size the timelines and lay them out. This is effectively what this is. Right, so I'm up against BDL talking about rockets, so I thought I would use a rocket of my own. Sorry, do you have As children, well, you can reuse the same clutter timeline for multiple animations if they're, if they're going to have the sub same range. But if you want to, that's, a, that's an interesting choice. In other words, you have an overall timeline, and then you say, at sunset, this happens, which is another timeline. This right. Happens. Effectively, that's what a clutter score is. But the yeah. clutter score is the API for making it easier to do that. Yeah, but, it, but in that way, you could have, you basically allowing yourself to have a hierarchy of scores and sub scores. Well, that's, 
That's true, and that is a deficiency of Clutter's score right now, is that you cannot chain them together. So I thought I would have a little demo which I could show that would show a few different behaviors, show a timeline. So I thought I would choose a rocket. So when you saw there, first off, there was a uh, straight up uh, path behavior, then an ellipse, and then it went on a beast line. So but that was a bit quick, right? So I should really think about changing some of the times. So So I thought I would show a bit of the code for this. I don't normally like giving code in my... Uh, ooh, delete. Cool. Right. So here's just one example of where I could... Oh, that font's not big enough, is it? So here, in this case, I create a, uh, a timeline, which I'm going to say is going to go 500 milliseconds. Um, and for that timeline, I create, an, I create an alpha with an alpha, just a ramp function that just carries on there at the same rate. And then I create a path behavior, and I simply just say, right, apply the behavior to the actor. And then I'm going to specify some of the knots to use in the, uh, in the path. So a knot is just positions to use to follow along on your path. Um, so, in this case, I want to fire it to halfway up the screen and so, so forth. So, this, this is a lot of code here, and a cluster effect would be a much shorter amount of code. You could just say, okay, just start here, end here, done. But it has its deficiencies. You can't do more powerful exam examples. Uh, similarly, as well as doing the same, as well as uh, animating here, here's the ellipse. I just says, but I have the height and the width of the screen as the, what I use as the, um, as, of the stage. And then it just, because I'm starting here, it just flies around in a nice corner like that. But let's move on. I'm going to post that demo on my blog. Um, so Clutter script. So when we first do Clutter, we have a lot of people need to program stuff in C. No, it's very hard to give designers a C program and say, oh yeah, just change these, just change these lines, you know, to apply the new design. So we came up with Clutter Script. Clutter Script is based on JSON and uses the JSON glib library to um, to use it. And so JSON, if you've not seen it, is actually the JavaScript object format, and you can specify information all about what the ob what the object is, what type it is, how to position it, how to color it, and also specify a uh, function to call when an event is applied. Um, as well as specifying the objects themselves, you can also specify, well, the actors themselves, you can specify any of the objects in Clutter. So you can also specify the timelines and the behaviors in the, this format. So you can actually do almost all the, dis all the description of what your uh, scene should look like in a Clutter score, in a Clutter script, sorry. So Clutter model, those of you familiar with GTK programming um, will have seen something like the GTK tree model, which is a generic data structure where you can store um, data that you can then access and, and lay out and format as you wish. This Clutter model is an implementation, is, is a uh, interface very similar to that. And there is a uh, list store model in Clutter, which you can then, which implements this interface and uses various Uses, sorry, we use a G sequence to uh, store the data. Ah, shaders. Well, so shaders are, allow you to do um, arbitrary pixel ba pixel or vertex um, modification. Well, not arbitrary. Some uh, modifications to your uh, the contents and of uh, of a image. These programs are actually run on the graphics card, and in Clutter we have a mechanism for saying, okay, right, load the shader in. In, and in this case, it has to be in a GSL, GLSL. Um, there is support for um, actually assembly shaders, but because a lot of because people we want the software to be more flexible. In general, we only go for the GLSL. And you can say, okay, here's a shader. Apply it to an arbitrary actor. I would give you a demo of this, but it doesn't work on my 
laptop. Okay, so um, in Clutter 0.8, we added the layouting API. This allows you to um, influence how actors are laid out relative to other actors, so you can build composite, composite actors. Historically, you would have to consider everything to be part of a Clutter group and position things relative to each other inside the group. With the layouting API, you can ask an actor for its preferred width and height and then say, OK, right, I'm going to put you here. And then you specify, uh, and then you give them an allocation box, which is where they are allowed to paint and to put themselves. Um, this allows you to implement uh, things such as reflowing grid, uh, reef grids, tables, which are strictly formatted, or things like horizontal boxes or vertical boxes. Um, this allows you to. Uh, build much more complicated and high level UIs, whereas previously in before 0.8, you had to implement everything, all those things as a clutter group. So there are a bunch of interesting add-ons to go along with this, uh, the core of clutter. Um, and so there's clutter Cairo, clutter GST, clutter GTK embed, and clutter box 2D. So clutter Cairo, um, this is a way of asking of creating a Cairo, you can create a clutter Cairo texture and a Cairo context, and say, and then do Cairo operations onto that tech, onto the context. Those, the, the things you draw, then appear on the texture. Um, you that will then get uploaded. This has the disadvantage that what you're drawing isn't well, isn't optimized because you're having to use the software paths in order to be able to draw the uh, the use the to draw the Cairo operations. Um, the whole one of the motivations of, of Glutter is that we're using, we're exploiting the, um, the accelerated OpenGL hardware that we're finding increasingly in desktop, mobile, and embedded systems. This unfortunately sort of bypasses that. However, in the future, hopefully, we'll have a way to um, draw directly to uh, the pieces of memory using Cairo through accelerated means. But I'm just going to give a little demo of an of a application that's going to use. Uh, classic Cairo. Ooh, that's not that. Ooh, dear. So this is a uh, Lipschampler from Pierre, Pierre Luc, and uh, this was. This is um, Montreal, yeah. <laughs> which is the default location that's set. But uh, this is panning around in Clutter. Uh, but, and the actual areas are drawn, in, um, are drawn in Cairo, the little tiles. But see, these are now faded in as textures, as Clutter actors. And uh, you can also zoom in, which is now, so now it's redrawing. Now, Pierre-Luc, I, I have a suggestion for a feature here. You could do like on the iPhone, and you could zoom in on the texture, and then redraw as you get the better tiles. But very cool. So, so this is this is an interesting example where you can combine something that is benefiting from the three D acceleration here, which is the the panning around and the um, and the, the prettiness of the fading in, with something that isn't using the advantage, which is the Cairo. But hopefully, in the future, we'll have lovely accelerated Cairo. Clutter GST. This is this is a add-on that allows you to uh, have have a texture sync or a pipeline or a direct um, texture that w you can draw to any to a, a special type of clutter actor. Um, this allows you to hook up an arbitrary pipeline and draw video with it. Um, this this allows you to build awesome uh, media box UIs, um, integrate the. Uh, Video. Well, I have an idea that we should build a video uh, conferencing thing using telepathy, Farsight, so that we can pull down the uh, pull down the video, and we should use, use some class. And this would because GST would allow us to do this. Um, there's also because we live in this awful world now with proprietary software. Um, Clutter Helix backend, which has all the features of Clutter GST and shares the same Clutter media interface, so you can write an application in. Um, 
in, against the Clutter Media interface and also have uh, it work against GStreamer or Helix. Ah, VTK Clutter Embed. So as um, Clutter is increasing its use in uh, desktop systems, we're going to need uh, a way of integrating the GTK GNOME desktop as a whole uh, with um, Clutter uh, components. And GTK Clutter Embed is a actor that you can embed. It's a GTK widget, which within it is a Clutter stage. So you can embed this inside your GTK application like any other kind of widget, and then use it to access. Um, you can draw your Clutter actors onto it. So I'm going to have a little demo here, which is a program called Tweet, which is Emmanuel Abbas's um, Emmanuel Abbas's uh, Twitter uh, client. So hopefully this will work. There you go. So this widget down here, this is GTK, GTK button. But the area above is a GTK clutter embed. So in this case, those, those uh, little speech bubbles are drawn using clutter. So I can have some nice smooth scrolling here. Uh, this <laughs> this is this this is this uh, this act is actually implementing a uh, a because of the powerful event thing. This is actually implementing a uh, iPhone style finger scrolling, which when you're trying to do it on a on a laptop doesn't quite give you the same effect. But uh, yeah, so everyone's twittering actively. Um, so, although we have the, a Clutter GTK embed, so you can embed uh, Clutter inside a GTK program as, an, as, an, as a widget, it'd be really great if you could take GTK widgets and embed those as actors inside your program. So this would allow you to um, exploit all the G existing GTK widgets and then build a much more complicated, rich UI, but still using the GTK widgets that we already have for things like tree views, uh, tree um, entries, and all those other kind of things. So there is some work on that. And Alexander Larson has work, been working on that. But right now, that also needs to solve some of the off-screen uh, windowless problems that GTK has. Um, so maybe in the future, you'll be able to embed GTK, actors in, uh, GTK widgets inside Clutter as an actor, which I guess would probably mean you'd be able to embed, embed the Clutter Act a clutter widget inside, but then let's just not go there. So another funky clutter add-on is Clutter Box 2D, which is a Box 2D is a physics engine which uh, has been a, which uh, Pippin or even Colas has adapted to work with Clutter. So what you can do is create cl various Clutter actors. And you can specify properties on them, such as okay, this one has this one has uh, this one's static; it doesn't move. This one's dynamic; this one it can be manipulated by the user. And how these interact with each other, you can also hook them together and form various joints. So, like all physics engines, it, it has things like joints, collisions, gravity, and um, the, probably the best way to explain what these different concepts is with the demo. So here we have a very, very simple example. I have a label here, which is a clutter actor, and I can just drag this around. And it's because of the way it's got some weight attached to associated with it. If I drag it by the corner, it spins around. Ooh. If I choose the middle, it probably won't spin around as much. Similarly, here's a block. Oh, and it can interact with the label. That you don't need, what you don't need to do is you don't need to program very much more beyond the actual actors themselves, other than specifying that they're manipulatable or that they have um, uh, are static so they don't move. So, so surrounding this whole area is a big static group which, which prevents me from dragging my things off. There's another example where I can just move these uh, around and have them all. There's a bit of gravity in this one so that it's cut, they're falling back down as I move it around. Oh, that's interesting. What happened there? 
<laughs> That's not clutter. <laughs> Oh, everyone dance. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a driver bug. Okay, should, should we have some questions? Yeah. So um, whilst we're just waiting for the projector bulb to cool down and then warm it back up again, um, are there any questions? Okay, yeah. It's, it's hiding, right. Star Trek. Hey. So I, I won't drag that actor around anymore. Uh, interesting physics, but um, okay. So here we have some um, some more fixed points, so that they. Uh, they actually, these, this cluster rectangle, which is positioned like this, is, is, is actually interacting with the uh, more dynamic ones. Oh, so I can fly them over there and uh, preventing them moving around. Oh, that's went backward, not forwards. Yeah. This is, oh, that's, this is an interesting one. This is rope. So this is actually just a chain of uh, cluster rectangles joined together. So I can move them around if I can, and they fly around neatly. But I could also chain together some little textures. And as you see, there's actually a piece of, th these are actually following each other in a rope. And it goes round and round and it gets stuck. There we go. And which is where, this is what is happening because there's a piece of chain that's linking them all together. There we go. So that's the physics engine. And it's, relati it's still in relatively early stages, but uh, it's pretty cool. Um, And uh, tweets updating. Ooh, maybe I'm going to get a new Twitter. Or maybe I'm not. Oh, well. So tweet is actually, power, is actually using a library called uh, Tidy that we created as a higher level library on top of Clutter. Um, but it was implemented before we had the new layouting API. And a, a lot of the things that it does to work out how to position actors, um, all the little hacks and the little c bits of code that are not so nice, gone away. You now, the, the layouting API makes it so much easier to specify how things should be positioned relative to each other. So, I thought I might have a look, tell a little bit about the internals. Um, so, it says we're fixed point here. Um, whilst I was checking the uh, git log for, um, to see if the cluster animations API had landed, um, I saw that actually there was a patch that a uh, branch that had been in development when I left the UK. Uh, it still looked like it was in the early days, but actually it's since been merged, which uh, removes fixed point. And now we're floating point internally. Um, so this, the reason for this was that actually switching to fixed point, um, having internals, didn't really give us anything apart from incredibly difficult code to read. Because fixed point you have to implement with a bunch of horrible looking macros. Every time you need to do a division or a multiplication, you need to use these macros. And um, you know, it's not great. Ah, so events. So Clutter uses the uh, W3C event model, which means when events come in, they, um, first off, we, think we, we have to sort of figure out which um, actor they belong to. And we do that by painting what's called a pick run. And 
Each actor has a unique identifier, and this is a number. And we then turn that number into a color, paint off screen a bunch of the old, where, uh, with the transformation matrices that we would use to paint the actors on screen, and we ask each actor, so what do you look like? In the case of a texture, it would be a square, unless we have some, um, but that is because there's some kind of interesting problems in that if I've got a texture which has a bit of alpha, um, we need to make sure we consider that so that, you know, you click through things. So you can actually, if you're implementing a composite actor, you can override the pick function and say how you should be drawing things. Um, as, well as, the, as well as the picking, so once we've figured out which actor we want to do, we have to, so we, sorry, we paint everything in the pick buffer and then we go, okay, the user has clicked here. Right, let's look that up in the memory, pull back the color, and then we can look, use that color to look up which actor it was so that we know where to fire the events to. So this means that if you have various actors laid on top of each other, this, and so the user can see them that they're laid on top of each other, the events will also go to that one. But you can also set an, uh, an actor as unreactive, by, which is actually the default. So that therefore, an event will go, will go through there, and, and it won't be, so it won't be painted in the pick run, and then for the, that will get the events. And if, by following the, w3, the W3C um, bubble and capture phase, we, we go up and down, so that at any point you can say, OK, I don't want the, you know, I need, I'm going to capture these events so that nobody else can get them through the various stages, and therefore handle things. So you can do fairly complicated things, such as the, uh, finger, the finger scrolling, in which case you don't necessarily, if, if, if the events are moving like you've got some rapid motion events, you don't necessarily want those to go through into the actor. But when it's sort of stabilized and stopped, not scrolling, you want to be able to click the individual items. The uh, bubble and catcher phases make that possible. So, because Clato is designed to be like a mid-level uh, toolkit, it abstracts over the, uh, the windowing system that which is the which, which is used, which is the way that uh, we and we create well we create the window and specify how to the uh, area on which we can draw. So uh, on the desktop this would be G GLX. On an embedded system this would be e EGL, EGL or EGLX. Uh, OSX has its own system and UIKit. UIKit is the uh, OpenGL windowing system that's used on the iPhone, which has a um, OpenGLS. Uh, compatible process uh, GPU in it, and so all the funky animations, all the funky um, graphics are done through a very similar um, toolkit like Clutter, which can draw, um, which, which uses the same mechanisms. So therefore, we actually, ha in fact, have Clutter running on the iPhone as well. Um, so if you're looking for that, I have a quick Google or, or YouTube, in fact, for uh, Clutter and iPhone, and you find a video of on, of that. But as well as the windowing system, we also have different backends for um, OpenGL, OpenGS, and OpenGS 2.0. And those are provided through Coggle, which is uh, an in internal library that abstracts over these things so that you have, an, you have functions that uh, you can call within Clutter that are irrespective of the uh, actual drawing used. Um, that is because the, the OpenGL and OpenGS have, very su have fairly subtly different uh, functions need to use, but we want to be able to abstract them. You can also use Coggle in your own applications if you want to create um, the headers are exported and the library is available. That in, your, in your own applications that use Clutter, if you need to do anything clever like uh, create an actor that is that where you're going to take an existing texture and crop it, or where you want to change the texture coordinates, or if you want to do things like uh, accelerated primitive drawing, Coggle has a set of the primitives that you want, so if you want to draw triangles or, or paths or such like. So, but Clutter isn't actually limited to C. Although it's implemented in C, because it's a glib based library, it can be bound into Perl, Python, Mono, Varna, C++, Java, uh, Ruby, and JavaScript. Sorry, there's no Java. Um, JavaScript's very interesting. There's the GNOME 3.0 work that's being done at Red Hat, um, among other places, uh, is using Cluttered, cluttered JavaScript bindings to produce this UI, um, and this is this the, the, the this combined with the JSON can allow you to create very rapidly create um, 
pretty awesome UIs, um, but also in a prototypical way. So you don't need to worry. You can just mock it up very quickly, and then when you're happy with it, think about how perhaps you'd want to produce some abstractions or interfaces or composite actors to actually increase your reusability. Or you could leave it as a prototype. So as I said, we're heading towards 1.0. Um, that should be available in a couple of months now. Um, 1.0 will be API. 1.0 will be ABI compatible, and API compatible with 1.x onwards. Um, so this is so we're heading towards making sure that we've got a stable, um, li a stable library, much like the uh, attitudes used in Glib and uh, GTK. So we really want Clutter to be used in as many places as possible, and part of that is providing a good level of stability in the ABI and API. Um, sure, but, but also we realize that stagnation is important and we want to avoid that. So 2.0 will probably be branched uh, off quite quickly after uh, 1.0 is released and therefore the, the active development, development will carry on there. Um, over the 1.0 lifecycle functions will be deprecated, um, but in general the, we w uh, the functionality will only be added if it's really useful. But lots of interesting development will happen in 2.0. As I've mentioned before, Clutter Effect is going away. In fact, it's actually gone away in, in uh, Master. Uh, Clutter Animation is replacing it. And this is an API that allows you to say, OK, I, I have an actor at this position. And rather than say, I want to move it um, to this position, I can just say, OK, um, at, it starts with this position, and then it, it's going to end with this position. Or it starts with this position, and it's going to end with this rotation. Rather than specifying the angles to rotate by, you just say, this is what it looks like at the beginning, and this is what it looks like at the end. So very subtle distinction, but this is much more familiar to, the, to animation, uh, animators who use Flash, who will start off with creating their square, turn it into a circle, and then will tween between the two. Clutter animation is a tweening API for Clutter. Um, it also does, a, does away with some of the uh, the, of the use of Clutter Alpha, so that it's a much more it's much more obvious how you go about changing the behavior of your animations. Um, this still allows you to have the very nice natural animations which you get through using a sign-based Clutter Alpha, um, but. It avoids some of the complexities that Clutter Effects actually introduced, even though it was trying to solve them. And as I've mentioned, we're now going to be floating point internally. Um, this is probably a contentious decision, um, but it actually makes things better in the long run. We feel um, the drivers that we did that we tried to use a, f a fixed point with wasn't really proving very useful, and. Ah, clutter text. So right now with point eight, um, you have these two separate uh, actors which you can use to produce text, a clutter label and a clutter entry. Clutter label is a multi-line text um, but it's that you can scale, size, do whatever you like with. Um, and you can access its Pango, content, uh, Pango layout, so you can do very interesting things there, except it's not editable. Um, and cl clutter entry is a very basic entry widget. Um, you can't have multi-line entries, but Clutter Label is multi-line. So Clutter Text unifies these two into a single um, actor, which, in wi which you can create the text in. You can sp specify rich text formatting through Pango. Um, but it's also you can say, okay, right now you're editable. So you can produce uh, UIs where. Which, which probably feel more natural to a lot of the people. Oh, why can't I change this text? Why do I have to, you know, turn or change the the styling of the uh, en uh, into an entry? Or or why or why why is it so rubbish? So um, Clutter Text unifies the text APIs into a single way, um, single editable, and it's very nice. And, and that has now landed too as well. So right now, 1.0 is heading towards the st um, stability d development and. Um, We've got we get, uh, point nine is go has either been released or is going to be released at the end of the week. Uh, I'm kind of not sure which week it was when I was told that. So, uh, but that will be the first dev unstable development release and uh, should show up uh, lots of interesting issues in of all the changes that we've been making. Ah, 
And here's the URL, clusterproject.org. Uh, so I think we've got some time for some questions. Lua bindings. Lua bindings would be very interesting because Lua would, and uh, I spoke to uh, Oyvind about this, and he has some history of using Lua, and Lua would be very good. Um, the only, the, the, the <coughs> principal basis for creating the binding is, if, is, is there a glib Lua binding? There's a glib Lua binding. Fantastic. So you've got a lot of the work already done there because we, we use a lot of the function, you know, features from glib. Um, so, yeah, no, that would be cool. And that's G-Object as well, or just? Okay, but that would be, that, you know, that would be fantastic. That's always the first initial hurdle that's the diff most hard, is getting the, uh, the G-Object, G-Lib bindings going. Um. What happens if you've got, say, a square and then a circle in front of it, and you move the circle away, so say the circle is obscuring it additionally, you move it away, does the square get redrawn at all? Like, does the actual drawing code get, get cold again? So the question was that if you have a circle and a square and you move one of you move to so you move two actors relative to each other, does the painting get called? Uh, yeah, so one's obscuring the other and then you move it so it's not obscuring anymore. Like, do you do the redraw of the back object? Right. Um, uh, let me just think about this. So obviously we would have to um, Yeah, so they would uh, that would get repainted, yeah. Okay. So you would be moving those two things. So but that would be the area that would get repainted. And of course, the pick buff would also get repainted because the interactivity of those two would change because I've moved them to each other if you have made them reactive. Right. Yes? Right. So that's a really good question. The question was, what is this, uh, the switch of uh, floating point effect on ARM systems? Well, on a lot of the systems that... Um, have the ability to do uh, 3G, um, the, uh, OpenGL, the 3D, um, those also have uh, accelerated hardware floating point. Um, but we did some calculations, we did some test runs, we did some profiling, and that we found that internal to cluster, there aren't that many um, op uh, operations that do a lot of floating or fixed point calculations. And even if you're using the... Um, the uh, software floating point is actually not really a problem. Okay. Internally, a lot of stuff is used, positioned, for instance, in clutter units, which is a screen independent um, sizing uh, unit, and which means that you, if you're doing divisions and multipl you know, multiplications with that, those are actually, your positions are actually, a single pixel is 1,024. So um, you're actually, your, your divisions are things are much less of a problem. Actually, that's not true. It's uh, 2 to the 16. 1024 is the clutter angle, which has gone away now. So. Yes. So the question was, uh, in my JSON example, I specified the uh, width in millimeters. And that's an, this is an example of the cluster units again, where we actually store things in effectively uh, device um, independent units, and therefore we can make conversions from millimeters to DPI, uh, using the DPI to pixels at the time we use it. Which is fantastic if you're working with a designer who says, oh yeah, it's just, you know, just lay that out to be three centimeters by four centimeters, that's fine, yeah. So that's what we can do. Which is very useful if you're talking about user interfaces that are going to uh, be different across different screen sizes and in, especially in the mobile space and the embedded space. Yes? 